Hello everyone, this is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State University. This is the Introduction to Drawing for Designers class in the School of Design. And today is September 8, 2020, and we were going to um, talk about tools that um, you might need for this class, okay? So let's get started. I have a list and I will prepare a list for you. And of course, different brands, you can get different tools from different brands. It's not, it's not really crucial, but some brands are better than others. So I hope, I hope um, YouTube doesn't mind me doing, um, talking about brands. Um, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is pencils. And in the list that I'll send you, um, there is a, a Lumograph pencil, and I believe it's a B. So this is uh, pretty good pencils. I, for this little demo, I also will use um, these pencils called uh, Blackwing. Okay, and I have three kinds, and they correspond to, oh, I thought I had three. I only have two, oh, here it is. They correspond to three different um, three different hardnesses. Um, I forget now which is which. Okay, anyway, you need pencils. So I would say you need uh, to sketch, of course, HB, but also B. And these are the different hardnesses. Uh, um, hardnesses, yeah. Um, so let's see, you need an eraser, although for sketching, you don't want to use it that much. For drafting, you might want to use it. And this one is a good one, Stadler Mars Plastic. Um, then you need a sharpener. And there's different kinds of sharpeners. You could get an electric one, and Panasonic used to make a, a fantastic sharpener that looked roughly like this. And you put the pencil there, and it sharpened it automatically. Um, or you can get uh, a manual one. And this one that uh, from Blackwing also is a fantastic one. It has, it has two blades, but they're not for different size pencils. They're for the same pencil and it's got step one and step two. And when you do the first step, it makes, I don't know if it's easy to see, but it just makes the lead stick out a lot. Um, kind of like this, okay? And then there's the second sharpener, the second hole will actually um, smoothen this to a nice point. Uh, so let's do that with the second number two. Oops. Right, there you go. Okay, and then what I do is I also just use my hand to smoothen it out even more. Okay, um, and when you use pencils, let's talk about that. You really, you really should feel good about it. Like it shouldn't, it shouldn't uh, scrape, and it, sh it should feel like it's really moving nicely on the paper. Of course, the paper makes a difference too, and we'll talk about that. So when you hold the pencil, if it's long enough, um, then you can, you can hold it like this, so it rests on this spot here on your hand instead of falling in if it's too short. All right, so pencils. Of course, if you have just a pencil, that's okay too. You just you know, just have pencils. Uh, in this class, we're not gonna use uh, pens, okay? No pens at all. Um, although if you were to get one, this is a good, uh, a good type. It's called Micron or Micron, and it comes in different, uh, different thicknesses. All right, so I'm gonna scratch off my list. Eraser. Okay, I'll jump to a different kind of pencil, which is the one we use for for drafting. And there's different names for it: mechanical pencil, uh, mechanical lead holder because it holds the lead. Okay, and usually I think it's a one and a half millimeter stick. Uh, but the lead is really not lead. It's actually graphite and with different proportions of clay that can, you can make it harder or softer. So for our purposes, for our drawings, we want uh, two H leads, okay? 
And again, I believe they're 1.5 millimeter and they fit this type of, um, there's different kinds, but um, what you don't want, and I don't have one here now, is the kind where you just go click, 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 and the lead is very thin. And the problem with that is that it's shaped somewhat like this. So the lead in those is always kind of square, even when it's thin. Whereas with this, um, you can sharpen it with a gadget that's a sharpener, or you can use uh, sandpaper, which I'm gonna show now. And if you have a little bit of sandpaper, um, you can sharpen the, the lead like that. Now they also make um, this kind of little pads of, you might have seen them. Um, this lifts up and here's your sandpaper and it looks like a, like a little tool like that. Um, but you can just grab a piece of sandpaper and fine is good. So this is, um, 2020, it's sandpaper. This is the kind you use for metal. For, I don't remember what number this is, but um, so you definitely want to go from rougher to smoother. And what you can do with the lead, bring it out, and then you just go like this. And what I'm doing is I'm turning it. Okay, I'm turning it as I'm dragging it. Um, well, actually, you can start. So you do a little bit, then you turn a little bit, then you go again, then you turn again and so forth, uh, unless, until you get a nice point. So the difference between this type of lead holder and the ones, again, that are very popular and you just click, 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 and the leads are very thin, is that it doesn't break uh, as easily. And I can also make a point that's super, 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 super sharp, um, much sharper than the one you can make. Um, now what we need is a little bit of, I mean a little bit of something to kind of get rid of the extra, the excess, okay? Um, then be careful because this is sharp and you just bring it, so I'm pushing so that I let it, let it in. Um, the gadget I was talking about that's mechanical, it's a little expensive um, and it looks like this. It's like a little barrel, barrel sorry. It's got a little attachment here. The, pen, the, the pencil goes in at an angle and that causes it to go against, it's a little off here, go against a, a grinder that's inside. Okay. So what happens is the, let's see, the pencil comes in this way. Well, just the lead comes in and by, um, by turning, uh, this point actually ends up being, right? Because it's gonna turn like that. So you end up having a really nice smooth point, okay? And then here in this gadget, there is like a little filter, looks like a cigarette filter, um, where you can then clean up your, your lead after you sharpen it, okay? It's a more expensive, so you don't have to buy it. You can just make do with a couple of pieces of sandpaper. Okay, let's look at the list. Uh, okay, so with that, you're also going to need a couple of triangles for some of the technical drawings that we're going to do. Let's see, I have to try to keep the same stack of paper here because I've, I've made the, my focus fixed. So I don't get all that yo yo effect. Um, so it's triangles for me. Um, having, having grown up in Italy and having gone to art school in high school is a little bit of a, of a sore spot because I've had a really hard time finding, um, finding good triangles. Um, okay, the best one really that I found are Alvin and they're this kind, these are smoke tint, they come in different transparencies. Um, and these are smaller than the one you probably should get, but they, they could also work. Uh, let's see, these are 
yeah, eight inches and six inches. Well, they might be okay. These are nine and seven. Um, so what's good about this particular brand is that they're square and I'll explain what that means in a second. Um, these also have inches, but the trouble with that is that oftentimes they're not as precise as they should be. So for example, if I compare these to, let's see, this is a, a T-square by the way, I'll talk about that in a second too. So every ruler is different. You would say, why? Well, this happened to be exactly right. This is good because the inches really match. Um, but recently I tested another one and I found that it was actually a little bit off. Okay, so I'm gonna test now eight inches. It's just a hair and you can't quite see it, but in this triangle, uh, eight inches are a little bit longer than eight inches on my metal ruler, okay? Which is to say that if I were to work together with these tools, with this set of tools, Sometimes I measure with the metal ruler, sometimes with this, and I might be a little off. Now, granted, you're probably not gonna design something that nowadays would be, you know, um, used directly from your drawing. You know, there'd probably be a, a machine that makes it. But still, uh, if you're trying to make things correspond, this could be a problem. Um, and I forget what the brand of these ones is. Um, what I do like, about these ones is that the inch markings and the centimeter markings, which we'll use sometimes, do not start in the corner because what happens is the corner usually sometimes gets chipped off. And so if, you're, if your markings start there, which would be zero, um, that's a problem because then I lose it. It's also really hard to make a mark on the corner. You're always gonna go off one side or the other. It's much better to to have the mark start later because then I can clearly um, pick it up. Okay, so that's a good feature of this particular um, this particular triangle. But let's not worry for a moment about that. Um, let's stick to this. Um, so you definitely need to, they should be proportional. So you can see this one is the same width, the same length on the two edges. This one is longer but if I overlap them, they're roughly the same. Uh, don't get two triangles that look, you know, maybe like this. That wouldn't, that shouldn't be good. Okay. And the triangles are, one is called 30, 60, and that means degrees. This would be 30 degrees. And then um, that would be 60. And then this one is 90. Okay, uh, and in the 45, that's 45, this is 45 degrees, and this is 90 right there. So this is called 45, 45, this is called 30, 60, and that's because um, you get the angles from, there is a tool called a protractor, you probably remember it from middle school, um, where the little tick marks, define the degrees. So you start at zero and after a full circle, you get to 360, okay? So if I were to um, put my triangles on this thing, let's see, uh, it would be the opposite. Yeah, this might be 30 degrees. This might be 45 degrees. All right, you see the triangles here? And this is, of course, 90 degrees. Uh, the first thing you want to do with a triangle is figure out if, if it is square. And that sounds funny, of course, because is it a square or is it a, a triangle? It is a triangle, but by square, I mean check, check if this, if this um, angle right here is, is a true square. The way you do that is you... And I'm gonna use now my, uh, my T-square, which I'm gonna run against the edge of my desk, of my board here, which you can't see, but I run in this way so that I get parallel lines and also gives me a, 
a nice nice place to work and it doesn't move okay so what we want to do is test if it's true square and for that I'm going to use this better this better more precise uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it really dark so now what I do is I flip okay I flip this so I have that position now I'm gonna flip it over this axis and what I want to do get is I want to get exactly the same line. If I don't, it means that my triangle is, is more like that or like that. In other words, it might be coming out or it might be falling in and hopefully it's perfectly straight. So if I flip this and I check, I can see that it is good. Yeah, so that's good. Okay, once again, go like that, flip it, test it. And I'm going to test now the other one. And since I'm showing triangles, here's how you work with them, whether you have a T-square or just the two triangles. You, you hold one tool, in this case it's a T-square, so it's pretty uh, firm already. And as you move this triangle, you keep a couple of other fingers perhaps uh, open so that you can then lock it and hold it when you do your line so it doesn't move when you're doing the line. So again, I'm testing that and it's true square. And that's very nice. Um, okay, since I did introduce the T-square, which again, you probably all know, this is a nice one. It's again from Alvin and I'll make a list. It's an 18 inch one and now I can't, really show it in the video fully but what you can also get is a board um, a nice drafting board that's a light board and you can have your your t-square move along this um, straight edge on the side okay these unfortunately are kind of expensive the nice ones um, but it's a very useful this is 18 by 24 and I can't show it in full here, but imagine that I would be using this underneath here. Uh, they also make uh, nicer, well, they're nice because they're at an angle, so they might have a little fit, foot there. Okay, and if you can afford it, if you have some extra money, you could buy one of these. Um, they come with a parallel edge that can go up and down um, against which you can put down your triangles and it makes for a very nice um, working. Uh, the only thing I found is that they usually don't make them with a nice wood surface. They make them with a very shiny Formica surface, um, which is not ideal. In fact, what I'm doing even now is I'm padding my drawings a little bit so I get a nicer, softer surface. Yeah, so again, the T-square is a nice tool to have. Um, it's, uh, you know, in the old days, they used to make them really solid out of wood and metal. And now, of course, plastic is, uh, is not so great, but aluminum is still good. Um, and if you don't get a T-square, um, you don't have to get a T-square, get at least a, uh, a metal ruler, okay, a straight edge. And this is a 15 inch straight edge uh, made by office mate um, it's got a uh, cork surface underneath so it doesn't it, it can sl doesn't slide stays on the other hand it loses a little bit of the cork <laughs> so that's a little bit of a disadvantage um, so you need a, a ruler with inches especially if you don't have markings on your triangle and definitely get one that also has centimeters and millimeters. Okay, um, let's see if I can show a, an, an inch is about 24 millimeters. Okay, and um, because you're going to need to measure for um, some of the projects. Um, 
if you don't have this set up or if you don't have uh, let's say a separate board it's really it should really it's really nice to have a board because it doesn't matter what environment you're in you can always um, have it to work uh, so then the way you would use your t square is like so right so you just slide your t square up and down up and down your board so let's let's assume now that i have neither of these things or at least i have a a, a ruler to measure the way then you would want to use your triangles is um This is a kind of substitute t square, one of them. Again, normally when I draft, I would be using this tool, the mechanical lead holder, but for the video, so it's clearer, so it shows I'm gonna use one of these soft pencils, which is not normally what you would do. Um, okay. So I'll show how to quickly make a square using these tools. Uh, what I might do is I might start by getting a reading of my ed the edge of my paper, okay? Let's say like that. Then I align my triangle and I move now across while I hold this. Now to hold this so that it doesn't shift around, um, what I do is I put I put my hand a little bit on the paper, a little bit on the triangle, and then again, I leave a couple of fingers free so that I can then, right now it's free to move the top triangle, and then I, I lock it, and then I make my line so that it's firm when I, okay. So how would I do, let's assume that's my reading again. What I could do with a square, to make a square is, I could start like that. Um, let's say I want to make a, uh, a three inch square. Make a mark and the trick is to not, not, um, not to make too many measurements. You don't want to like make a line and then measure from there to there like this, make another point here, make another line, et cetera, et cetera. Think of, things are going to get skewed if you do that. Instead you start with one good marking and here I'll show you how to, um, by turning my triangle, now I'm gonna get one other horizontal. So I take my reading there, right? Let's see. Like that. And here then I have quite enough room. So I flip again and now I can do these. I can take, I can draw a diagonal so you can see you can do a lot of stuff with just two triangles so because this is 45 degrees this gives, this gives me the same width um, and now that i have that marking i can finish off my square by um, so i only took two measurements well one measurements really two points that's it um, everything else I did using the triangles and you should get into the habit of doing this because your drawings are going to be uh, more precise. Again, I'm holding hand on paper on the triangle, a couple of fingers may be free so that when I slide this triangle, I can, I can then lock it when I'm ready to draw my line. Okay. And it's a good idea to cross your lines so you know exactly where your points are. Let's see. Um, oh, let me quickly show how to sharpen a pencil, a regular pencil, if you don't have a nice gadget like this one. Um, and that brings us actually to another tool, which is a, a cutting knife. And regardless of what other teachers might say I'm pretty, I'm pretty stubborn and adamant about this. This is the best knife you should get, and you should not use an X-Acto knife. And an X-Acto knife is the classic tool that looks kind of like that, and it's got a little point there. They're dangerous. They're not really useful for, for our purposes in design anymore, because um, they break, 
and they were meant to cut on glass from the days when people had to do layout, paste up with paper and glue and all kinds of things. Instead, what you should get is this knife, which is called Olfa, which is made in Japan. And it's been around since maybe late 60s. Um, and the way you sharpen this guy is that it has a series of blades like this, which are pre-scored, okay? So what you wanna do is snap one off by using um, this device on the end, which has a little opening. You bring this just, just so that it lines up, and then you just snap it. It's very safe, and this is mechanical, but it has no screws, and it's really very, very good. It, it just, just um, very efficient, okay? Um, so this is the kind, and then you can also buy extra blades if you, <laughs> if you wish. Uh, they're very sharp, so be careful. As they say on TV, beware of imitations because this is, this is really the real McCoy here. Uh, Exacto brand makes a knife similar to this, but it's not as good. So here's how you sharpen your pencil by hand. Um, you actually push with your thumb that's holding the pencil. So, because that way you have control to get started. Um, And you shouldn't rush now because I'm videotaping and I tend to rush. It's not a good idea. Um, and you do this at first because it's hard to control the force of your hand. This is way too much force to control. And then after you get the main point, uh, then you can go slightly, you know, lighter there on the tip. Okay. Now this takes time, of course, but it's actually a good relaxing exercise. Oh, kind of meditative and once you do that then you can still make it again I'm turning the pencil here make it make it better you know make it more pointy like that um, whoops this So that's the knife, the Alpha knife. Um, so let, let's talk about paper a little bit. And uh, you really need two kinds. And normally at school, I would have given you a third kind, but unfortunately we're not at school. So um, you need sketching paper, which is, um, 74 grams per square meter, which is the European way. It's 50 pound. Uh, this is a good pad I got. It's from Canson, uh, nine by 12. Again, 50 pound. 50 pound in America means that a, a ream of this paper of a certain size weighs 50 pounds, which is not a great way to define paper. The best way is to say, okay, how much does a sheet weigh? if it is one square meter, okay? And one square meter is, I forget the dimensions, how you get one square meter, but one sheet of paper that is one square meter weighs 74 grams. And it's a little hard because in America, of course, we don't use grams, but um, anyway, sketching paper is, is roughly, yeah, it feels like you're a good stationary paper. And if you get a pad, you can, Reap a sheet from that. Uh, it shouldn't be too smooth. Uh, then you need um, uh, Bristol paper. This is again a good one. It's cancer and it's smooth. And this is heavier. This is about three times as heavier, as heavy. And it's for, um, you, can, you can hear from the sound that they make, uh, like the bread in Ratatouille. That's how you tell if, if bread is good. Um, 
for drafting. So these would be for drawings that require precision. Okay. And actually, since we're doing that, I'm going to quickly show how to do, I'm gonna take a sheet and I'm gonna show how to do the, um, the detail of the, of the title block. Um, which is at half inch from the edge and then three quarter inches. And I'll do this really quickly. So many of the other videos show this. Um, for this, you might even use the paper as your guide. In other words, I'm using the edge of the paper. Um, Even though you can't be sure that the paper itself is square. So if I now align my triangles, yeah, they fit nicely and snug, but sometimes they're not. Uh, so this would be my title block, half inch from the edge, and then this is three quarter inches. So that's half inch, and this is three quarter, and that's half inch. And then inside that, you would put a couple of thin lines that you can hardly see them. And in those now I would write my information, which you could do freehand nicely if you can. The drawing information that is, uh, for which again, there is a, a sample in iLearn. So again, this is the drafting paper. And then the last kind, well, actually not the last kind, uh, we need tracing paper, and this really is the is the bread and butter, I think, for designers. Tracing paper is just thin, inexpensive paper, but still pretty strong, which is fantastic to just get things done really quickly because it has this nice you know, in-between sort of transparency. So if I need to you know, trace something, I can do that. Um, but perhaps then I want to isolate and all I have to do is just lift it up, you know, like in Photoshop opacity layers, except it's much faster than Photoshop. Um, so that's tracing paper. Uh, there's different qualities too. Again, this is a good, you don't want an expensive one. This is a good one. And uh, this is about 40 grams. Um, it's, it's like what used to be called onion skin that people used to make copies of the letters that they used to type on their typewriters using carbon paper from which you get carbon copies, which is when you see, see somebody. Um, but for that, you need a special layer to transfer that um, image. So tracing paper, and let's see what else we have. Um, oh, and then there's even another kind of paper that's called vellum. And unfortunately, I don't have a piece handy now, but vellum is actually quite transparent, but also quite strong. This is not it. This is, um, so let's, let's summarize. We need, you need um, sketching paper. And then you need drafting paper or drawing, then you need tracing paper. And then vellum, which really is a misnomer because vellum is either, I forget if it was the calf skin or the, um, the other animal from which they made sheets of writing material before paper was, um, you know, came into widespread use. Uh, but it's a super high quality, 100% rug. Um, and it's more transparent than this, but that would be used to do a final drawing of something after perhaps having a sketch underneath, right? So let's say I have a, you know, a drawing that's like that. And let's say that for some reason here, I just need some parts of it later. Um, you know, I might finish my drawing like that, perhaps. And that would be my final clean drawing on vellum. Um, when we return to school, there's, there's some of that at school. 
And in terms of the weights, I'm going to use the, um, so uh, let's see, tracing is, uh, tracing paper is 25 pound and it's 41 grams per square meter. Then sketching is 50 pound or 74 grams per square meter. And drafting is, let's see what it says, a um, hundred pound and 260 grams. It's funny because they actually list the grams on the, on the pad, but they don't list grams for what. And what, again, what it is is a square meter. So if you take a sheet of paper that is one square meter, um, one square meter is like, like a yoga mat, more or less. That's the size. Um, then it's so many grams, half a kilo or about, no, a quarter kilo or about a pound. Uh, so it's fairly heavy. Um, let's see, 206, yeah, half a pound. And then vellum, I, it's probably gonna be, it's probably gonna be maybe 40 pound. So those are the pads. And right now we're working on with nine by 12. Uh, so let's just stick to that. Sometimes the assignments might say an half by 11, but let's just stick to nine by 12. Okay. Okay, we need a compass. And now that's another, a little bit again of a sore point because it's hard to get a good compass that is, you know, not too expensive. I got this one. Um, it has this sort of funny, I don't know, psychedelic thing. I don't think they do anything, but, um, and it has a wheel, which is good if it holds the tension and it doesn't all of a sudden start moving on its own, which would not be good if you're trying to make a circle and all of a sudden this moves. Okay. Um, now with a compass, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that the tip here actually is not shaped like this one, which comes off, off the box. Um, so it's got these little wheels here to tighten things. Uh, and also, unfortunately, this pointer is not as sharp as I would have liked. Um, but this is what I could get. A shape like that. I like the ones that are like this, where it's very, 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 very pointy. Um, anyway, the, the point shouldn't be like this. The point here should be like that, like a chisel, which then is going to get much closer to the, um, to the pointing point, so to speak. So what we'll do is we'll take that off right away. And uh, that also might be too soft. That might be HB. And what we want is again, 2H. Okay. So I'm not sure what's in here now in this little container in terms of hardness, but what I'll do instead is I'll take a piece from my lead, from my lead holder, like that. And I'll put it in there. And this is where you definitely need, for this there is no tool. You have to have a piece of sandpaper. Um, so we're gonna stick it out a little bit more than the point right there, tighten it. And now I have to find my, my sandpaper. There it is. Um, so you start with a coarser, of course. So when you do that, it's hard to see now from the camera angle, but what I do is I'm going sideways, but I'm keeping it really uh, always at the same. So if this is the paper, 
I'm keeping my compass like this as I move it back and forth. And I try not to tip it this way or this way. Also not to go too high on the angle or too low, otherwise you're gonna hit the metal. Um, what we're doing is we're cutting out an ellipse out of that cylinder, right? Which is our, our lead. And I kept it a little bit too long, so I, I'll bring it back in. Um, it's important that this angle stays nice and uh, so it doesn't turn around. Anyway, this gives me a good sharp edge. It's almost like, think of it as a blade, like as a blade in, a, for example, an ice skating uh, shoe. Uh, so when that blade comes, you know, when that blade circles, it's always gonna have this nice edge going around that circle. Okay, it's only touching one little point. All right. And the way you use your compass, and the size should be, I think this can make up to 10 inches, I forgot. Let's quickly check it. If I open it all the way, Let's see, roughly, yeah, that's six inches. So actually I can make a 12 inch, um, 12 inch circle with this compass. Um, but for now, for the demo, let's make one that is um, the maybe six inches. So I measure three inches. Uh, what I like to do is I like to draw a line so I can make a little cross. Okay. In other words, if I make a point on the paper and say that's where I'm going to put my compass, well, who knows where exactly that point is, right? But if I do a line and I do a crossing, now that's much more identifiable. Okay. So let's see. Make a nice cross there. Make another marking, so that's three inches. And now with the compass, uh, how you hold it is like this. You can't just like throw a dart, so to speak, and try, you know, and hit that right away. I mean, you're never gonna get it. So what I do is I grab it down low like this, and then I use both hands to help me locate it. And when I'm good with it, okay, then I go up and I hold it like this. And now what I have to do is I have to measure. And I wanna measure by doing trial and error. So if I'm pretty close, I try and I say, oh, okay, is that, is that good? It's hard to see now, but it may not still be so good. In fact, I can see that my line is a little bit off like that, okay? So I wanna make sure that I really hit it just like that. So the best way to do that is to just keep trying until, until you get it just exactly where you want, okay? So I'm gonna do that. And when you're happy, then you do your circle. I'm gonna do it. And now for videos to age, it's not so great because it doesn't show up very much. But for you, you definitely want to use that hardness, which is hard as opposed to HP. Um, Okay, so now it's a little bit hard to show from the camera angle, but what we wanna do is, once you get it all set up, don't hold both of them because that will make, you know, force the compass to do something funny. So instead you wanna work from the top here, okay? And you wanna literally spin it, almost like you're spinning a top. Of course, you're gonna have some resistance. And what you wanna do, again, it's hard to show, but I'm dragging it. I'm dragging it like I might be using a regular broom and I'm dragging, and then when I reverse, I drag it the opposite way, okay? I don't wanna push it, like I don't wanna push it like this, like I might be using one of those uh, big, big brooms, you know, that the janitors use at school to clean, um, because that might kick it off the point, all right? See, this is pushing. Okay, so that's how you use the compass, uh, briefly. And the last thing I think are a few miscellaneous um, 
optional things. Um, you, it, it would be good if you had some tape, drafting tape. Uh, you know, it could be the blue tape that painters used or drafting, which is kind of brown looking. This is blue. Um, oh, this is actually called artist tape. So this is fancy, but, um, and you just need tape because you need to sometimes tape your, your paper when you're doing, um, when you're doing uh, uh, drafting that require, you know, the, the sheet to stay, to stay put. Um, and the other videos individually, different drawings will show that. Um, so drafting tape, uh, a bone folder is a fantastic tool that every graphic designer should have, but also every product designer too. Um, it's a piece of bone, literally shaped. I mean, a bone that's been shaped into a, into this this shape, um, and it's nice because it's good for folding and bending, um, and it's also good for scoring. And by that I mean that if I wanted to make a perfect fold here, let's assume this might be a little thicker paper, I can score. I get a nice edge, which I can then. Okay, the reason it's better than a piece of plastic is because it doesn't burn. The, uh, the, the bone doesn't burn, it also doesn't leave a marking, although it will mark your paper, it will make it shiny. Hard to see here, here. So sometimes if you're doing something fancy, you wanna protect the thing that you're, you know, bending and folding. So that's a bone folder. Um, you need, something to cut on and this is the back of my pad and that's fine for cutting um, but because it is wood it will make your your blade dull fast uh, if you can help it don't use don't use uh, the plastic to cut because that you might first of all you might cut your fingers because it might jump the plastic um, and also it will ruin the, the ruler so instead use uh, Use a metal ruler. Okay. When you cut, let's see, let me cut something that I don't need. Um, yeah, make sure you cut and you protect the part that you want to save, in this case, my left side. Okay, that's how you cut. You want a soft surface, you don't want glass or anything like that. <clears throat> And I don't have one to show now, but those uh, those mats are sometimes called self-healing um, healing mats. Um, they're they're sort of semi-hard rubber, um, and what happens is when you cut with the knife, you know the cut will will kind of heal and it will you won't leave a groove. Um, so I think that's it. Um, yeah, another tool that, let's see, that you don't, you really don't need for the class, but you maybe should be familiar with it, which is a, an architect scale, which has preset readings when you're scaling something down. So you might have something that is, you know, half scale, so, or where it's a big drawing and, half an inch equals a foot in architectural drawings. That's the architect scale. I think that's it. I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just summarize them all again, bringing them into the, onto the stage, so to speak. Um, and grab, one of my pencils. Okay, yeah, the one I had made. Um, so, let me see. Yeah, different kinds of pencils again uh, for drafting. Eventually, we'll get, we'll use at the very end, we'll use uh, colors too for a couple of drawings. Um, and if, you, if you're eager to get color pencils, uh, Prisma colors. Uh, 
soft and with a square section like this. And then um, let's see, the other ones are called um, color eraser. And these are shaped like that, the section that is, and these are a little bit harder. Color, forget the exact name. Anyway, this is probably enough if you don't want to get something else. So HB, the hardness, uh, B, maybe 2B. Uh, but for drafting, we want a mechanical pencil right, the kind where you sharpen it with a little sandpaper or with a little tool. For the pencils, if you can get this sharpened, it's fantastic with the two steps we talked about. Um, and let's see, you wanna get two triangles. Okay, these don't have markings. If you get the ones with markings, and I think this is called art, art triangle. Um, these are useful, but as we saw the markings, they're not like 100%. Um, and whatever you do, you need to get two that are proportional okay, to each other. These are, was six and five, and this was or seven and six, and this is nine and seven, meaning the uh, long edge. T square is always useful. So this is a 15 inch one. No, actually this is an 18 inch one, sorry. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna get one, probably this is the right size. Um, you need a, uh, a straight edge or ruler with inches and centimeters. Uh, this is steel, but I actually prefer, I don't have it here, but I prefer aluminum so it would be more like this it's also lighter we talked about how if you had extra funds you could buy a drafting board um, then you need the pads of, of, um, of papers so bristol paper for the uh, for the for the drawing for the drawing as in like technical good drawing, you need sketching paper for everyday sketching, and you need um, tracing paper for um, quick, you know, quick stuff. Uh, then you need a compass. And by the way, speaking of compasses, ask your parents, grandparents, relatives, they might be an engineer or an architect or someone who just had to buy a compass in the old days before computers and they might just have beautiful compass sets that come in these like jewel cases with like red velvet lining and the compass might be in that in that case and it will be fantastic if you can find one of those and often they come from germany and they have like a little pull thing that you pull to open them so just just double check to make sure the preps you don't already have a beautiful compass that um, is just waiting to be resuscitated, so to speak, or put to work again. Um, the knife, very important, okay? And um, I'll talk more about how to use it, but use this one. Don't get exacto knife. And I, I'm really, I'm gonna write that one more time. No exacto knife. What you want is alpha. Okay, that's the knife you wanna get. Uh, a cutting pad, a cutting mat, but you can always use the back of your drafting pad, except again, this is wood practically. I mean, all paper is more or less wood, unless it's cotton. Um, but, uh, and this will make the blade dull, but in the absence of a, of a you know, of a mat, you can use that. Um, and then optionally, you could get a bone folder. Fantastic tool. And uh, that's it for now. So I'll see you in the next video.